So the standard configuration of the system, uh, which is on the market now since eight years, is the M4 Tornado. Um, it's equipped with a microfocus tube, so M30 watt. It's equipped with a solid state uh, silicon drift detector and also the option that you can use two detectors, which has then the advantage that you can collect more counts and process more counts. And you also can go for detectors with a larger detector area. It's a closed chamber, so you can evacuate between one millibar and atmosphere. And so you can measure either on the atmosphere, which is required if you want to analyze uh, light elements, or in case that you want to analyze liquids, then you have to do it under atmosphere. And there also we have an improvement it will show later then. Maximum BAM, uh, sample load is about five kilograms, and <coughs> the sample can, the mapping speed can be up to uh, 100 millimeter per second, and the minimum step size is four micrometers. Sodium as a limitation, um, customers came and said, well, it would be great if we can analyze elements below sodium. And it would be nice to um, do faster mapping. And <coughs> it would be nice if we have uh, samples with a certain humidity, if we have liquid samples and we want to analyze light elements, that we have a helium flush. And it would be nice to have a higher workload. So then we incorporated all the suggestions into the new system. And so the Tornado Plus. So this system is the very first commercial microsurface system which really can go to carbon. And this got done by several technology improvement, so the detector window for the detectors is a light element window. Um, so it's a special window, so we also did some modification on the excitation path to utilize the low energy intensity emitted by the X-ray tube. And we also improved the detector electronics. So this as a proof that we can really analyze um, this light element, so this is um, Mineralogic sample, and the motivation behind this, we want to differentiate between fluoride and calcite. In order to differentiate between these uh, two different minerals in the past, um, it was quite difficult because fluoride is one of the key elements we couldn't see so far. And so here you can then see the distribution so of fluoride, oxygen, and carbon here is in the background. So this is an embedded in, in resin embedded sample. And how does the spectrum look like? So what you see here is then the oxygen peak, here you see the carbon peak, and the blue one is the fluoride. So this um, now can be utilized not only for your geological samples, so for any uh, other samples where you want to analyze then elements below uh, this in the parcel magic barrier uh, sodium. Concerning the detection limit, so this is a comparison what we get with the M4 Tornado. So with standard configuration versus the M4 Tornado Plus. And it's very similar if it goes to um, elements above uh, or up to odd, odd, uh, atomic number 15. For sodium, however, you already achieve a 10 times better sensitivity with the Plus version versus the uh, standard configuration. So these are actual measurements. So here, if you go these, uh, below sodium, down to carbon, well then we at carbon we are talking about roughly 20%. And again here, um, the, the light element performance um, demonstrated by a um, geological sample. Here we have the video image. Here we have the map of the total intensity. And we also have a software which is plotting the minerals, so not just the, the elements. It already gives you the information about different uh, minerals in the distribution. And now we can also then, in this case, a uh, specific case where we have to distinguish between fluoride and calcite, we now have then the information of the fluoride here, uh, which dramatically helps really to determine the right um, mineral composition. Again here, this is um, a drill core, was measured under vacuum, and the area here is uh, 160 times uh, 50 millimeter, and the step size here was about 50 micrometers, and the measure time per pixel was 50 milliseconds. From the excitation, 50 kV, so full power, 600 microamps, rhodium target tube. What you can see here then is the total X-ray intensity, where you see then the different uh, variation. Here you see then the <coughs> um, elemental distribution, the various elements. So this is just the elemental distribution, calcium, iron, uh, oxygen, fluoride. This would be then the distribution of the different minerals. 
and here again um, the um, distribution map maps of the different single elements. What we also have new in the Tornado Plus is the sample handling. So speed is uh, sometimes a crucial thing and you want to replace samples very quick. So we have then a quick change stage interface. So this is a dovetail coupler and this enables you then to add different kind of uh, sample supports. So this is the standard plexiglass plate and here we have special holders for geological samples. So for thin cross sections, for drilling bore cord, here again for uh, drilling bore core. And this then helps you because you can prepare everything before the measurement, so you simply have to replace then the, the sample holder. You save time then in adjusting the sample. What we also have done is reducing the acquisition time. How you can reduce the acquisition time? So if, if you deal with an, an overload of counts, so you only can process a certain number of counts, and if you exceed the, the, the count rate throughput performance, then you just deal with rejected uh, events. It means you just increase the dead time, but you don't uh, increase um, the actual count rate throughput. Uh, what you can do is you can either increase the detector area, or you can increase the number of detectors. If you increase the number of detectors in combination with parallel operating electronics, pr uh, processing electronics, then the advantage is, because you process them parallel, that if you double the detector area, you also double the throughput. It's indicated here, if you just double the detector area and do it sequentially, um, just uh, from a certain count rate, more events are rejected and not processed. So in comparison, if you uh, process the counts in parallel, then you deal with less rejected counts and you really uh, convert the increased detector area and the increased counter throughput performance. So this is the new detector electronics. What is seen here, so this is the uh, performance if you increase the input count rate versus the output count rate. From a certain input count rate, if you increase the input count rate, it doesn't translate into an increased output count rate. So this is the, the mapping, so this is some kind of conventional throughput you can achieve um, with MicroXRF and we have then introduced a new detector electronics which in combination with the two detectors allows us to achieve then a throughput perform performance of 550,000 counts per second and this translates into a five times faster processing. There is another feature which really helps and this is patent pending. We have introduced a mechanism or a method where you can increase the field of depth. If you're using polycapillaries, so polycapillaries are providing collimated beam where you achieve the smallest spot in the focal plane. If you above the focal plane or below the focal plane, you get a broadening of the beam. So actually then you don't deal then with the nominal um, spot diameter, you deal with a broader spot diameter. And depending on the divergency, you may only have a two millimeter uh, field of depth. We have introduced so-called aperture management system where we limit the, in, the diameter of the incoming beam and we are utilizing a certain portion of the polycapillary which then uh, propagates into uh, uh, less divergency and the less divergency then translates into a higher field of depth. So in comparison, um, the field of depth, if you deal with the conventional layout, you talk about plus minus two millimeters. With this uh, aperture management system, you can um, increase then the field of depth to plus minus five millimeter. Where's the advantage? The advantage then is if you don't deal with flat samples, if you deal with samples which have a certain topology, in this case, you get a variation of the spot size, which translates into a blurry picture. Dealing uh, with this condition, um, you get a sharper image independent well, let, let's say less independent from the topology of your sample. And again here, a practical example. So here you see a populated printed circuit board. The left side is with the standard um, configuration and the right side is with this aperture management. Just um, take a look here on this structure. So here it's rather blurry. And again here you see then the, the gold bonding wires inside the integrated circuit. Here you get a way sharper image of the structure. So this aperture management um, feature helps you then also to get uh, sharp images even if you have a variation in the height. Another feature is, as I mentioned at the beginning, 
Um, we now have helium flush. So this is a strawberry, I would say a typical biological example. There's, if you want to do a long map, then you also deal with the danger that um, the sample may dry out. Despite that we can manage the atmospheric pressure, we may deal then with the challenge, okay, uh, we have a biological sample and we also want to see the light elements. And here we have then a computer controlled helium perch system. It could be a perch and go so that you have a constant flow. And you also can fill the entire chamber or the upper part of the chamber. If you do then the map of the strawberry, this is then the elemental distribution of the, the uh, potassium, calcium, sulfur, and iron. This would be then the oxygen. So this wasn't possible before. And now the light element performance in combination with helium flush enables you also to go below sodium if you deal with biological samples. And here you see then the spectrum, where you see here then a very well developed oxygen peak. Well, the, the nitrogen is a little bit tiny, but also here the sodium and the manganese. You were not able to see before if you have to measure on the atmosphere. So that you measure on the atmosphere, you see here uh, with the, uh, the argon peak here, because argon is in there. There's an additional feature in the PLUS. You can equip the instrument with a second X-ray tube. The second X-ray tube that has a mechanic collimator and it had a single collimator in the past and now can be equipped as a collimator changer. So what is the benefit if you switch to a second tube and the second tube here in this Example is equipped with the tungsten tube. And this is a comparison if you measure with the rhodium target tube with the polycapillary. In comparison here, you see what you can achieve for energy ranges above 30 keV if you have a tungsten tube in combination with mechanical collimator. So here you see then the K line um, of barium, lanthanum, cerium, uh, presidium, and niobium, neodymium. And so you see a yeah, very well developed peak and this is based on the fact that you are combining a tungsten x-ray tube or tungsten target x-ray tube with a mechanical collimator. Of course, if you have a very small mechanical collimator, there's always a trade-off then um, in, in the energy range up to um, 20 keV. Here, the, the gray collimator here, this is a 0.5 uh, mechanical collimator. Um, you, you don't achieve the same intensity compared to a pulley cap. So the polycap here is um, the green line here. But you see here, if you go then to the higher element, uh, to the higher energy range, then um, that you get uh, higher intensities for the elements or for the, for the fluorescence lines above 20 keV. And if you go to the larger collimator, so beginning from two millimeters, then you even achieve more intensity compared to the 20 micrometer polycapillary. So to summarize um, the specification, so what um, delivers or what, what are the, the specs for, for the Tornado uh, Plus? So the weight load for the stage got increased to seven kilograms. Now you can measure under atmosphere, vacuum or helium perch. Um, the excitation got optimized for light element excitation and also an aperture management system got incorporated which gives you a higher field uh, of depth and in case that you equip the system with a second uh, x-ray tube uh, now there are four position collimators uh, available so this is software controlled collimator changer from 0.5 millimeters up to 4.5 millimeter spot size is um, the same as for the standard version and um, we also now have increased the number of primary filters and the Tornado Plus, uh, as default, is always equipped um, with two detectors. And the throughput got increased up to 550,000 counts per second. So what is the benefit? So first of all, now you can detect elements below sodium due to the excitation conditions and the uh, silicon drift detector. Based on the higher throughput performance, you can reduce the acquisition time or you can collect more counts at the same time. <clears throat> so the aperture management system uh, provides you with a higher depth of field so that you see uh, variation in the features with still with the same um, resolution. Then the quick change stage helps you then to reduce the sample exchange and the setup time. And with the second X-ray tube, you get more flexibility if it comes to energy lines in the higher energy range, so above uh, 25 keV. And the programmable helium perch system 
um, allows them that you can do light element analysis um, at atmospheric pressure or at uh, biologic samples or humid samples which have the humidity or are liquid samples.